We just finished saving data using Flatbuckers for Unity. Now let's load some data. We're going to load the data just on start, because I think that's probably the easiest place to load the data. I hate it when it does that. Just let me type in my own method name here. So we're going to call load just after start. The next thing we're going to load, at least for this use case, is I'm going to load new cubes as a prefab in order to spawn them. So I'm just going to add serialize field game object uh, object to spawn. This way, when we load the position, we have an object that shows, hey, we know where we're going. Um, you'll have to figure out how to save your objects depending on your use case. I tend to grab them from addressables using the name of the object, the name of the prefab, as a string saved in our schema. I'll show you how to use addressables in a future video. You can also use resources or you can simply serialize them like this if you really want to. I do not recommend doing this approach, but I'm trying to prove a point here in a short period of time. So uh, when we're loading, you should probably do a whole bunch of path error checking here, um, but do your own error checking. That's not really part of this video, your IO is your own. We need a byte buffer. In order to take in our bytes from our file, we're going to call this one loader, just like we had saver. This is going to be new, and we're going to throw in our buffer. This can be put in in line, fortunately. This will be file read all bytes from application data path uh, plus path, which I think is the same place I put this before. You should probably have a full path here, but since I'm using application data path, it doesn't want me to put it in line. Um, figure out your own pathing. That shouldn't be a problem for anybody. If you're all the way up to saving, you should have most of this down by now. The next thing we need is uh, where to put all of this. So we need a root table. Our root table is object positions, at least for my example. And this is going to be the data that we've loaded. This is going to be object positions dot get root as object positions. And this is going to be from the loader. So we've taken our bytes from file read all bytes at this particular path, put them in a byte buffer loader. And now we have load data, which is our discrete data from our schema, our object list of vector threes. And we've loaded them using get root as object positions from this loader and just trust me it's in here i know this is a lot uh the next thing you should probably do is some list error checking make sure it's not zero uh for your path error checking let's see what i've got over here make sure the file exists uh if you have an autosave system make sure you're loading file not the autosave if at all possible if it exists, if it's newer. If not, you might want to return and give up. If there's no information to load, don't load. If the list is empty, also don't load. Something has clearly gone wrong down here if either of these don't work. So for int i is zero, let's make a for loop i less than load data dot object list length. This will be the name of this table here, this array. Uh, object list length, I++. So let's iterate through the information that we have. Again, object positions load data contains all of this information. We just have to access it. And for each one, let's spawn a temporary object. Again, this is only useful for my use case for this example. You'll probably want to clear your level or load a new scene and then spawn your objects in the state that they were. Um, that seems like a reasonable implementation. And temp transform.position, because this is what we've saved, is a new vector three. So here is where we grab the information from our schema 
from VEC3 has typed flow in XYZ. So let's start from the top and go to the bottom, where we went from the bottom to the top here, from the simplest to the most complex, smallest to largest. We're going in the opposite direction now. So let's look at load data in the object list, which is here, which is, and those are going to be vector threes. Let's use I so that we can iterate through here. New vector three, object list I. So now we're up here as the vector three. We need its value. And this gives us finally a list of floats that we can use in a way that isn't in this flat buffers black box. We're going to load X, load data, object list, I value Y. I'm just doing this so that I can hammer this home here. Load data, object list, I value Z. Now, gone into our, our saved data, we've grabbed object positions, we've loaded the object list as a vector 3, and for each one we are taking that vector 3 and creating a new object and setting its position to that position vector 3. In order to figure out what on earth is going on in this black box, <coughs> we're going to do a little bit of here, we're going to load we're going to tell ourselves that we loaded the temp name at temp transform position. This will tell us where it went, which might help us uh, figure out what on earth is going on here. So loading is a lot easier than saving, as long as you get this portion right here. Um, so this should be enough. Let's take a look out in Unity. We have a cube that is appropriately tagged. We have a save manager that needs a prefab. I'm just going to load another cube. And we have our save example, which means we should have a cube in this position when it loads. Let's press play and figure out what's going on. Bing! New cube. These are both marked as savable. So if I'm going to save this data, we're going to come out. We've got two cubes. Uh, I'm going to take this one out here. Remember, we saved two cubes. We're going to load them up. Two cubes. This is how you use flat buffers to efficiently save and load data. If I was to throw more cubes in here, I quit, which means I save. We were at 164 bytes. You should keep seeing that increase as you add new objects. That's a tiny save file. That's so efficient. We load them all right up. Congratulations, you can use flat buffers to incredibly efficiently save and load data. The next steps for you would be to make this schema more complicated and have some kind of interface to make sure that you can spawn your zombie character, make sure he's in the right state with the right amount of health in the right position in the animation, with the right rotation, with the right scale, with the right status effects, it has the right buffs. All of those things are things that you need to do on your own simply by creating an interface that works well with this schema and this code. In the next video, I'm going to show you an example of how this all comes together, but do try this on your own. This is a valuable thing for you to have in your toolbox. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. I guess I don't. I don't really do the whole YouTube thing. So thanks. Um, I'm not going to tell you to like and subscribe. That's gross. <laughs>